Revolutionary brain cancer treatment at Advent Health saves lives without surgery in the United States. Malaysia implements Alive in Jesus Sabbath School curriculum for children across South Asia Pacific region. Escrito Esto Ministry celebrates 30 years of global impact with the Word of God. Adventist students plant over 1,500 trees to restore forests in Ecuador. These and other news stories now on a and We begin this edition of ANN with news that brings new hope to patients and their families. Advent Health in Florida, United States, is offering a treatment for brain cancer without cuts, with millimeter precision, and without surgery. This innovation is transforming lives. This is basically like the newest version of an iPhone. We have a tool for controlling cancer in the brain without any cutting, without any surgery. And it has a whole bunch of different beams of radiation that essentially focus on one point. And they act like a magnifying glass. And the beauty of it is it can administer a very, very, very high dose of radiation to a very small and specific area. And literally within a, a millimeter or two away, there's negligible to no radiation at all. We are very firm believers in the concept of radio surgery and the platform of Gamma Knife. We've been doing it since the 90s, and we've been keeping up to date with the latest versions of the platform. It is the most precise technology in terms of radiation that exists today. So the Gamma Life gives us yet another tool in our toolbox to treat people with disorders that sometimes can be quite risky if you have to treat them with other means. We're proud to be the only institution in Central Florida that offers it, and I think that's a very big distinction for our program. And our patients are very savvy and they will travel from even out of state or even sometimes internationally to come to our institution to get this care. Inspired by the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Advent Health is leading with innovations that bring hope and comprehensive care, extending the healing ministry of Christ to all who seek relief and recovery. In an act of love and solidarity, the Adventist College of Vila Velha in Espírito Santo, Brazil, organized an awareness campaign inviting the community to donate hair. The campaign brought together students, staff, and the community in a gesture of support for women fighting cancer. The public square was transformed into a scene of compassion and generosity, where hair was collected to create wigs. The initiative also collected essential items for the well-being of the women served by the cancer support group. With over 90 donations, each strand of hair carries a story of empathy and strength intertwining the lives of the donors with the recipients. The campaign reaffirms the Adventist College's commitment to service and love for others. Leaders of children's ministries from the Seventh-day Adventist Church across the Southern Asia-Pacific region gathered in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for the 2024 Alive in Jesus Sabbath School Training Convention. The convention aimed to introduce the new Alive in Jesus Sabbath School curriculum for children from birth to 14 and youth aged 15 to 18, and to equip leaders with the necessary skills for its implementation. General conference leaders participated remotely via Zoom, discussing the curriculum's rationale, goals, and pillars. Along with local speakers, they emphasized the importance of steadfast dedication to nurturing children for future service and their roles in the kingdom. Women leaders from across the region presented the Baby Steps, Kindergarten, Primary, and Junior divisions of the curriculum, featuring live demonstrations on applying the guidelines and interactive learning strategies. The training was considered necessary and timely, helping leaders transition from the Grace Link to the Alive in Jesus curriculum, while adhering to the biblical mandate to train up a child in the way he should go. Attendees appreciated the similarities between the two curricula, which eased the transition process. The Alive in Jesus curriculum, developed by the General Conference Sabbath School and Personal Ministries Department, will replace GraceLink curriculum starting in 2025, beginning with the Baby Steps and Beginner Divisions. In this second report from the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Trans-European region, we will travel to Sweden, where many will gather to learn how to reach hearts with a new perspective on mission and service. But first, let's stop at the ancient Roman constructions in Pula, Croatia, where the Helping Hand Center offers support and guidance for mental health. 1,300 miles south of Moss is the city of Pula. 
situated in the northwestern region of Croatia, best known for its many ancient Roman buildings. On a busy, narrow street is another shop front, the Helping Hand Counseling Center. We initially, we have put emphasis on, on uh, physical health because we th thought this is going to be the, the key of our work, the, the focus of our work. But then it transpired that actually there is much more need in relationship to mental health. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was very interesting and um, addictions as well. Addiction is something that I maybe didn't expect so much. And the other thing is that it surprised me a little bit. I had a few mothers coming here who had problems with their daughters who had mental health issues. So bipolar disorder, anxiety and, and depression. When we started to advertise and share our vision, they were saying this is exactly what is needed. A frequent visitor to the Trans-European Division in recent years has been Katia Reinhardt, General Conference Associate Health Ministries Director. With training conducted in the Baltic, Adriatic and Southeast European Unions, the most recent cohort was held in Sweden on the campus of Lifestyle TV. The mission? To introduce a new paradigm for health ministries called Lifestyle Coaching. And I think Jesus came to do that. With his disciples he did that. He kind of help them see a new way of ministry, a new way of, a new worldview of reaching people in mission. And this is kind of like we're trying to do with coaching, trying to get people who are passionate, uh, zealous about health and health ministry and use their passion and knowledge, uh, but really look at it from a different perspective to be able to be more effective. We've uh, just recently accepted the call to go to uh, Greenland as uh, career missionaries with the Adventist Frontier Missions, uh, who mainly focus on the unreached. We see a great uh, fusion between the needs in Greenland um, and the skill set that uh, lifestyle coaching offers. And what I particularly liked very much is was the, um, we tried out health coaching or like lifestyle counseling on a very small scale and um, it helped us to connect with people on a personal level mm. and it was very fruitful. So since that time we were eager to learn more about, to be more professional in this area. What a joy to see that the health ministry is reinventing itself to advance the mission of reaching those who seem unreachable. In the next series report, we will show how the Adventist youth are engaged in regions of secularized Europe where they may face challenges related to faith and religious identity. Escrito Esta, the Spanish language ministry of It Is Written, marks 30 years of ministry this year. Escrito Esta is currently the most widely aired Spanish language television program of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Initially focused on the Latino population in North America, Escrito Esta quickly expanded globally and now has a prominent presence on national television stations in several Latin American countries. Current speaker and director Robert Costa emphasized the ministry's extensive reach, stating, media has no limits and the gospel has no barriers, and noting that Escrito Esta has viewers in 142 countries. Every year, Escrito Esta produces 72 half-hour programs and 365 daily devotionals. These programs are seen worldwide on television, YouTube, and other social media channels. As a result, an average of 1,100 new subscribers join the Escrito Esta YouTube channel every month. Reflecting on the 30th anniversary, Costa said, 30 years is a real miracle, but the greatest of miracles are those hearts that are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. For 30 years, God has used Escrito Esta to be part of his mission around the world. Escrito Esta Ministry, which filmed its first program on April 5, 1994, with Dr. Milton Piverini as host, began airing on cable channels in the United States in 1995. Today, Escrito Esta reaches audiences globally through television, the internet, evangelism, and humanitarian work. In 1885, a large party of Adventist missionaries traveled from the United States to Australia. 
Today's episode of Mission 150 tells the story of that first group of missionaries and the early years of the Adventist mission in Australia and the South Pacific. Welcome to another episode of Mission 150, the podcast that tells the story of Adventist mission. It's past, it's present, and anticipates the future. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Trim, your co-host. I am director of the General Conference Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research. And I'm Sam Nevis, the Associate Director of Communication for the General Conference. We'll be your hosts. Joining us today is Dr. Barry Oliver. Dr. Oliver is a very experienced historian and church administrator, originally from Australia, though he served as a missionary in the South Pacific. He served as secretary and president of the South Pacific Division, but for an historian like myself, he is best known as the author of a number of important studies on Adventist history, particularly Adventist organizational history in the 1901 reorganization of the church, a reorganization that took place for mission. So we'll be talking about that in a future podcast. For the full episode and other videos delving deeper into the Seventh-day Adventist faith and its story, visit our official channel on YouTube. In a remote corner of Tanzania is the Eden Valley Foster Care Mission. Far from urban centers, this mission is rewriting the script of education, offering young people an unconventional yet transformative journey. Eden Valley was established to provide young people with practical training. Today, over 40 students are receiving hands-on education in woodworking, tailoring, farming, and more. The woodshop is bustling with activity, crafting every piece of furniture on campus. In the tailoring shop, students sew garments, including uniforms for all the students agriculture plays a crucial role at Eden Valley, with students growing much of the food served in their cafeteria. Nearby, a hydroelectric plant generates electricity for the campus, showcasing the mission's commitment to self-sufficiency. The mission also offers a medical missionary training program. Recently, 20 students graduated after nine months of intensive study. These graduates now work in various institutions, return to their local communities, and some continue their training at Eden Valley. And some of the students are already in different institutions working there. We have about three students at Dunia here in Dar es Salaam. We have some that are back their own places and they are working with their local churches. And there are some of them for further training and some of them will be coming to work with us here at Eden. One success story is Simon, a former carpentry student who now teaches the craft at Kadula. He uses textbooks written and printed right on campus, demonstrating the mission's innovative spirit. The print shop, managed by a dedicated young man named Elab, produces all the necessary materials for these programs. The mission's unique approach ensures that students can create what they need right on site. Whether it's furniture, books, food, or electricity, Eden Valley fosters an environment of ingenuity and resourcefulness. This model of self-sufficiency is not only practical, but also deeply empowering for the students, equipping them with skills that extend far beyond the classroom. What you need, you can make right here right. and figure it out. It's amazing. If you need furniture, you make furniture. Mm -hmm. If you need books, you make books. If we need food, we grow, we need food, we grow food. We need electricity, <laughs> we make electricity. The impact of Eden Valley's training reaches far and wide. Recently, a graduate working in Kenya shared his passion for starting a similar school in his native Ethiopia, inspired by the transformative experience at Eden Valley. The student's dedication and the mission's holistic approach highlight the profound difference this training makes in their lives. They leave Eden Valley equipped with technical skills and the confidence and vision to serve their communities effectively. Eden Valley's story is one of resilience, creativity, and a deep commitment to service. The mission continues to empower young people, providing them with the skills to become missionaries for Christ. The Voice of Hope Radio celebrated 29 years in Ukraine, a significant milestone amidst a war that has persisted for over two years. A special gathering with listeners took place in the city of Chernivtsi, where the radio team shared their activities and new projects since the beginning of the broadcast. Leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Bukovina region and Vasil Makarchuk head of Adventist World Radio in Europe, 
congratulated the team and guests. The event featured a charity concert showcasing the talent of local soloists and groups. Volunteers launched a project to support Ukraine's defense forces. Approximately 300 guests attended, with over 750 viewers in the online broadcast. Together, they raised over 80,000 Ukrainian arrivnias, approximately $2,000, which will be used to create tactical first aid kits for frontline defenders. Following the concert, an exhibition area for the Voice of Hope and Hope Media Group was set up for guests who received souvenirs and participated in a win-win lottery. They also had the opportunity to experience being radio hosts in the mobile studio. The Voice of Hope Radio can be heard on 8 FM frequencies and online through the website, YouTube channel, mobile app, and podcast platforms across Ukraine. Currently, it offers 12 hours of daily live broadcasts, inspiring listeners with Christian content and interaction. May the celebration of these 29 years of the radio remind us of the power of the gospel message of hope in Jesus, and may the radio continue to be the voice that guides the country toward better days. Let us continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. Meet Perry from Melbourne, Australia. After fracturing her leg, she was out of work for 18 months and didn't know where her next meal would come from. That's when she discovered the Advanced Development and Relief Agency, ADRA. Now, as a volunteer for the Advanced Humanitarian Agency, she helps people like her with food and emotional support. Life changes very, very quickly. I had a very comfortable job and I was due to have a promotion. And unfortunately, I had a fall at home and I fractured my right leg. And it took 18 months for me to recover from that fracture. My name is Perry and I'm from Melbourne. We spent the next 18 months living off our savings. And it got to the point where we just could not live anymore. And I had to try and find help. And that was one of the hardest things I ever had to do in my life, was to ask for help. And um, we ended up coming here to Adra. And I came in here in tears and left with food and a smile on my face and a full belly that night. And that made all the difference. Unfortunately, not long after, I was able to return to work in a new job. Um, my partner had a stroke, so I'm his full-time carer now. So originally, we came to Adra because we needed the food support, and then I decided to become a volunteer. And I still get the food support, I still get the emotional support, but I'm able to give that back to others. And now the cost of living going up, our clientele has doubled, if not tripled. And people are really embarrassed asking for help because, you know, yesterday they were fine. But today they're not. I've been there, I've felt like a failure. I've felt like, what do I do tomorrow? You know, am I gonna lose everything? And that's how a lot of them come here. And it makes me happy that I can help other people like I was helped. I look forward to every Monday. I love coming here. I don't know what we would have done without Adra and the help that we've got from Adra over the years. I just want to thank you for your support, for people like me and for the people that walk through our doors. It means so, so much. A total of 1,510 trees were planted by students from the Adventist School of Ecuador, CADE.
This activity, coordinated by Foods Cade, brought together teachers and authorities from Santo Domingo de los Saichelas, a province located in north central Ecuador. Around 300 participants planted ancient and fruit trees on the four hectare Cade campus, demonstrating their commitment to environmental awareness and social responsibility. The students, many planting a tree for the first time, were notably joyful. The activity marked the beginning of a fruitful collaboration, highlighting the positive impact of Adventist institutions on the community. And now, discover how a simple vegan cafe in Armenia is transforming lives and fostering community connections in unexpected ways. Narek regularly greeted her neighbor, Anahit, in the mornings on her way to work. They would often stop to talk, and their friendship grew. One day, my neighbor told me that a new cafe was opening. It was a healthy vegan cafe called Dr. Veggie. I was interested in it because I love living a healthy lifestyle. I work at a bank, and it was near the cafe. So every day I had lunch there. This cafe in the center of Yerevan, Armenia, was run by Adventist as an urban center of influence. Narek knew that her neighbor was a Seventh-day Adventist, but she didn't really understand what that meant. Narek believed in Jesus, but had no interest in attending any churches. I remember clearly the first time I went there. There was something good inside these people a spiritual peace and calmness that I had never met in anyone else. Narik started participating in the various activities the center offered. One of them was a trivia night about Bible topics. After the first night, she realized that there were so many things she didn't understand about the Bible, so she started reading more. Narik decided it would be best to visit the Adventist church to get some of her questions answered. After attending church for about a year, I was invited to a healthy lifestyle camp. I decided to be baptized there, and it was the happiest day of my life. Narek is so grateful for her neighbor Anahit and the people of the Dr. Veggie Cafe. Urban centers of influence, such as Dr. Veggie, can be a crucial bridge between the Adventist church and its community. Yerevan is Armenia's largest city and capital with more than a million people. One third of the country's population lives here. As cities like Yerevan increasingly become one of the biggest mission challenges, Adventists have the opportunity to create meaningful connections with those around them. Unfortunately, it's expensive to do mission work in cities. The Dr. Veggie Cafe had to close its doors suddenly due to the high cost of rent. This loss is felt by the Adventists who run it, but even more so by the community members who had found it to be a fun, safe space to spend their time. Dr. Veggie has an opportunity to reopen, but they need your help. This quarter, a portion of your 13 Sabbath offering will help reestablish Dr. Veggie in a new, improved building. This will give them the opportunity to own the space and provide stability so they can focus on building relationships such as the one they built with Narek. Please pray for the future of Dr. Veggie and the Adventists in Yaravan who have a passion for mission. Through 13th Sabbath offering, we support incredible projects around the world. It's inspiring to hear testimonies like this one. This has been ANN. You can access other news by joining the official channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and explore the ANN website on adventist.news. 
Before we say goodbye, I would like to leave you with a profound truth for reflection, recorded in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 36. The text says, For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. We encourage you to study the Bible daily to learn about other wonderful promises of hope. Until next time, God bless.